Hey everybody, welcome to video number four of my playlist for my complete installation of all these new products I got from my Sun Dolphin uh, Journey 10 SS Kayak. Tonight's video, it's cold May night here in Western New York. It's actually snow today on May 8th. So it'll be a uh, good night to uh, go ahead and start putting together this next piece of video, walking through getting the power hooked up and see if we can get the hummingbird fired up. I'm not an electrician, so again, this is all fairly new to me. I think it's pretty straightforward. I've, I've done a few little things here and there, um, but we'll see how it goes. So a couple things first. Um, with the hummingbird, you know, you do get the power cable here. They do a pretty nice job of um, opening up the, the, the hot and the, the ground side. They give you a pretty decent amount of room to work with. Uh, I got this battery. This was Amazon, 27 bucks with the charger. Um, tonight we're going to need the wire crimpers. Uh, I got some heat shrink tube tape. And then these uh, inline fuse waterproof fuse holders some one amp fuses and then these um connectors i got at walmart so we'll go ahead and get right into it see how it goes first things first is um to prep everything what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get this heat shrink tube it's fairly long so i'm gonna actually cut this into thirds that way i have a uh, some room to work with Alrighty, I guess we'll start with the black side, the ground side. I think it's the ground, I don't know. These connectors here, they come in all different gauge wires. Um, I'm gonna grab these, this spade connector. It's the blue one, I think it's 16 of 14 gauge. And on this 12 volt battery, they fit perfect on the connectors. I don't see why it will not work. So let's go ahead and get this started. First things first, I'm gonna slide a little piece of this tube on here. Get that all ready. Actually, I might be able to cut that one more time. Uh, so these will go right here and the connectors I got there's like a little uh, metal plate it's gonna be very hard to see it but in the back so I'm just gonna run this wire up to that plate in the back and try to hold it with my left hand and then just line these up the ones I got, I mean, most of them are color coded, so with the gauge wire. So I'll go ahead and these you crimp twice, one towards the top, and then one towards the bottom. Now, I did consult with my brother. Thank you, Brian. He did a lot of uh, electrical work in his day. And he said, you're gonna wanna give it a good amount of force. He said, don't, don't He-Man it for all you old school people, He-Man. So, it looks like it's on there pretty good. I crimped it down, gave it a, a good, uh, if you can see the, good amount of force. Done there pretty good. I don't know if this step is needed, but I am going to put some tape. I think I'm just super anal. Now, if you feel like there's not enough room to work with, I guess you could cut this wire and open this up to give yourself a little more room. I think, I think there's enough room to make this work.
All right, I'll try to make it look nice and pretty. And I'm gonna slide this tube back on over it. I'm gonna crimp it down just a hair. I'm just gonna slide this heat shrink tube on there as best as I can. Okay, so far, so good. Now for the tricky part. To do the hot, what the instructions say in the Hummingbird manual is to take the inline fuse and you're gonna wanna put it as close to the battery as possible. So, these I got off of eBay. I think there was a pack of five for like five bucks. So I'm gonna cut this about here and then we'll uh, splice it together uh, to the power cord and then one to the battery. So first I'm just gonna slide this down on. We'll go ahead and cut these. Yeah, right about right about there. And we'll open these up, give us some room to work with. Just gonna give these a little twist. I don't even know if that's needed, but hey, makes me feel better. And the other side. Now for the hot, let's first take this one. All right, so we want this one closest to the battery. And then that side. I'm just gonna measure this, kind of line this up, okay. Have plenty of room so again I cut it on that one side so I'm gonna have the short side to the battery and then this side will go to the the power cord itself so I'm gonna grab another one of these 16 14 spade connectors put the heat the shrink tube on and we'll fire that in there Crimp it down twice. I think out of this whole process, this was the one I was worried about the most. I have no idea how electricity and all this stuff works. I did my fair share of plumbing in my lifetime, but Electrical stuff, yeah, not my thing. Okay, it's on there pretty good. 
give this a shot of tape. I don't know, slide, uh, slide that shrink tube back up. Okay, so now we have the heat shrink tube in place. Next, what I'm gonna do is I bought, the one I have uh, came with all different types of fuses. Uh, this says you need a one amp in the manual. So one amp, like I think I got these on eBay for three dollars. So let's just slide it in here. It does take a little force to get these down in, but it works. All right, so let's go ahead and close that up. And now we'll connect the two here. I'm just going to go ahead and get this down. So it does look like I'm going to have to go with the 16 gauge. Again, slide this heat shrink over. Actually, I'm going to trim this down just a hair. Okay, so let's do this side first. Get that nice and tight. I'm gonna crimp this towards the back first. And one more time. tape and 
and the tube. One thing I noticed, you want to make sure you give yourself plenty of room because when you crimp, you know, and then the tape, you got to make, you want to make sure you're able to just slide this tube over nice. I'm not going to do the heat part right now. I just want to make sure everything works. And then I'll go back at the end and do the, the I'm going to use a hair dryer just to kind of heat that thing up and shrink it down. I'm afraid to heat it up now, just make sure something doesn't work. So I'll do that at the very end. So now we're just going to connect the power side. Get that connected in. Feels like it's secured down in there. Tape it up. Slide the tube over. I think the hardest part of that was just getting the shrink tube down. This is going to be protected in the box, so I had a little tough time with that last part. And I guess I can always slide this down and around too, so. All right, so I guess here's the moment of truth. Let's plug in the ground. Plug the hot in. Time to break the cherry on this. I don't smell smoke. It worked. There we are. It's reading. It's working. It's getting juice. I don't smell smoke. I don't see smoke. 
So I think we're good to go. So what I'll be doing is I'll be taking this and we'll put this right into the cell block. Uh, and then we'll see how everything fits from there. So I'm gonna power this unit down. Before I get going, I did want to just double check everything, make sure everything fit. Uh, I did previously put the battery in the cell block, it fit fine, but now with all this uh, cords and all this funness, I wanted to make sure everything still fit. Uh, you can see it slides down perfectly, there's a nice, nice amount of room. So I got the battery in, and I just wanted to kind of see how this closed up. I think in my prior video, I got a little nervous, I will admit, I thought maybe you can run the wires through this slot here after hooking everything up i thought oh boy uh, because this end will not fit through there but then i realized there's little notches right here so all you have to do is slide this in the groove and then you just line that up there and boom there we go This is a really cool, again, I've seen lots of videos out with homemade ones and they all look really cool too. Um, again, this was my my time to splurge. So, you know, I, I spent the 60 bucks and got, got this from Yak Attack, it looks nice. So now I know that now I can just go ahead and power this up. Okay, and we'll go ahead and do the heat shrink tube next. And then uh, we'll wrap this one up. All right, everyone, so to wrap this one up, it is the morning after. I didn't want to do the heat shrink tube with the hot air dryer. Uh, it was 11 o'clock at night last night, and I didn't want to wake up the whole house. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this one up here. Now, as far as this, the heat shrink tube to kind of clean this all up and connect it down, you can, the instructions say you can use a hot air dryer, heat gun. Lighter can be used. Um, I'm just worried it might burn, you know, some of the wires or tape. So I guess if you do use a lighter, just be careful with it. So I'm going to try the hot air uh, dryer first. And I guess if it doesn't work very well, well, then I guess I will move on to the lighter. Party with it. Shrunk down in there. All right, looks like it worked pretty good. So I don't think I'm going to use the lighter at this point. Now we'll go ahead and get the other uh, the other two. Okay. Heat shrinks on. Everything's nice and secured down, it looks like. That air dryer worked really well. I'm gonna give this one more test, just to make sure nothing. Everybody, thanks for watching this one. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. We're going to get the transducer part hooked up and then get the final assemblies all put together. We'll get everything out on the water. So again, thanks for watching. I'm hoping these are, are helpful for you. So it's been a little bit of a journey for me. So we'll go ahead and get this all tested out there, get out on the water. All right. Good luck out there, everybody. Thank you.